Hello everyone, so in the previous video we went over this problem where we had to determine the average shear stress on pins A, B, and C and with uh, without any uh, special skills, uh, basically just calculating the reaction forces using statics we were able to come up with the uh, shear at A, B, and C however I'd like to apologize because in the previous video I labeled this as uh, X when it, it should have been Y However, I did refer to it as uh, force in the y direction, so all the calculations and the answers were correct on the previous video. So if, that's, if that caused any um, confusions, I, po I apologize and I'm going to try to be more careful. careful. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, look at the next problem here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. So problem 44 says determine the maximum uh, the maximum magnitude p of the loads the beam can support if the average shear stress in each pin is not to exceed 80 megapascal. All pins are in double shear and each has a diameter of uh, 18 millimeters. So a very similar setup to what we had on the previous question except for this time we're given shear and we are asked to find force uh, p. So let's go ahead and um, always start with what's given. So we're given that our t maximum, our uh, sh maximum shear is going to be eighty uh, megapascals. So this is the shear that we're allowed. We're also given that the diameter of each of the pins is 18 millimeters, same as in the previous question. And we are asked to find the uh, force P, the, mag the maximum magnitude of P, so P max. That is going to be our unknown. So let's go ahead and analyze this problem as always. Okay. So again, we have to um, do the statics. So every time we have a problem on uh, mechanics and materials, we need to be able to know statics. We need to be able to uh, calculate the resultant forces. So let's go ahead and do that um, again in this problem. So again, we're going to have our AY and our AX. Okay. And then we have our force, FCB. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by calculating, let's say, forces in the Y direction and then see what we get from there. So in the y direction, we're going to have the uh, AY, which is going to go upwards, so positive. We also have our FCB in the uh, y direction, so FCB in the y direction equal to 3 fifths FCB. And then FCB in the x direction is 4 fifths, uh, so 4 fifths FCB. So again, I apologize if this caused any confusions on the previous um, on the previous video. So our F in the Y direction is going to be 3 fifths FCB. And then now we have our downward forces, which are our um, P forces. And we have uh, four different one of them, and we can just go ahead and add them up. So we have 1, 4, 10, 11. P and that has to equal to zero. So remember we're after the reaction forces, so let's solve for AY. AY is going to be, um, that is going to be negative, not positive, because our P forces are going downwards. So that is going to be negative. Therefore we have 11 P minus 3 fifths FCB. Okay. 
So now let's go ahead and um, do the uh, sum of the forces in the x direction. That has to obviously equal to zero. And on the x direction, we have our um, FCB that is going to the right. So it's going to be the uh, x direction one, and it's 4 fifths FCB. So we have 4 fifths FCB. And uh, we're going to have AX on the other way. And those are the only two forces, so they have to add up to zero, which means that uh, AX is equal to 4 fifths FCB. Okay. So let's go ahead. We have the other trick, which is uh, summing moments around point A. And that has to obviously equal to zero. So AY and AX, since they're going directly on the uh, pin A, they're not going to cause any uh, moment. Also, the um, FCX, F, uh, FCBX in the X direction is not going to cause any moment as well because it's parallel to the pin A, which means that the, per uh, the perpendicular distance to pin A is going to be zero. So it's not going to cause any moments. Therefore, we have uh, the forces P, which are going to go downwards, uh, that are going to cause a moment. So let's go ahead and calculate those. We have P times 0 0.5. Uh, we have P, so it's 6P times two we have three p times four and we also have p times five point five so again since they're gonna go downwards the beam is gonna rotate counterclockwise so using the right hand rule we're gonna get a positive moment that's why they're all positive and uh I'm gonna go ahead and work on that side since we ran out of room. Okay, so let's look at our negative moments. So uh, FCB in the Y direction, that's gonna move the beam clockwise. That, sh that means that we're gonna have a uh, negative um, moment. So our FCB in the Y direction is 3 fifths uh, FCB. So minus 3 fifths. FCB and then the distance is going to be 6 so times 6 okay so those are all the forces that are gonna give us a moment so let's go ahead and uh, find what FCB is going to be in terms of uh, P so if we bring the uh, this on the right side we're gonna get uh, 18 fifths times FCB equals to, um, let's go ahead and factor P out. We're going to have 0 0.5 plus 6 times 2 is 12 plus 12 plus 5.5. Okay. So we got 24, so 30P. And then we have 18 over 5, FCB. So our FCB is going to equal to 150 over 18P. So I'll let them move that up. Which is the same as, let's see if that, that can be simplified further. So it's going to be 50 over 6, simply divided by 3, P. Okay. So now that we know FCB, we can, um, we can see what our uh, resultant f uh, reaction force at A is going to be in terms of P. So resultant... reaction at A 
our ay is 11p minus 3 fifths times FCB, but we just found FCB to be 50, uh, 50 over 6 times P. So we can go ahead and do that over 6 times P. So our AY is going to be 11P minus 150 divided by 30. So 150 divided by 30. That should be just 5p, so my ay is going to be 6p. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at the ax now. So ax is going to be 4 fifths times fcb. Remember, fcb is 50 over 6 times p which is 200 over 30 so it'd be 20 over 3 p okay so our resultant at a is going to be square root of ax squared plus ay squared that means that the resultant at a is going to be Six P all squared plus twenty over three all squared. Actually, the other way away, the the other way around, but it doesn't really matter since they're just adding up. So we have square root of. So 6 squared is 36 times p squared plus 20 squared, that's 400 over 9 times p squared. So we can go ahead and factor our p squared out. Thirty-six plus 400 over 9. And that is going to be 8.97p, uh, if we take the square root of that, because, uh, let's see, 36 plus 400 divided by 9, that is uh, 80.4, so if we take the square root of that, we get 8.97, so we're good. And then P squared is of course just P. So, so far so good with our resultant at A. So now that we have the resultant at A, we can go ahead and calculate um, what P is going to be using the uh, shear formula. Shear at uh, pin A. So as mentioned on the previous vid video, shear at A is going to be the resultant at A over the um, area, uh, the cross-sectional area, but we're going to multiply that by 2 because it's a double shear. So think about the, uh, having a uh, the pin right here. So you're going to have a cross-sectional area on uh, the top side and one on the bottom side because the force is going to be split uh, equally. So we're going to have 2 times area. Uh, so we're given, we are, we are given our um, uh, sh a shear, we're given the area because we know the diameter. And uh, what we're trying to find is uh, P. 
so R A is 8.97 P and then on the bottom we are going to have 2 times 1 fourth pi diameter squared. So by rearranging the equation we can uh, solve for P. So if we multiply our two area with the shear we're going to get uh, 1 half this will just simplify to 1 half pi d squared times our shear at a equal to it is equal to uh, 8.97 times p so 0 0.5 pi d squared tau a over 8 Point ninety-seven. that is going to equal to P and if we go ahead and plug in every information that we know is we're going to have 0 0.5 times pi times our diameter squared times our tau which is um, 80 megapascal And then we're going to go ahead and divide by 8.97, which is uh, what we found from the resultant. And we get 4,539. 4,539 Newton. Remember, one uh, megapascal is equal to one Newton per millimeter squared. So that is why we end up with Newtons. So our P is going to be 4.54 kilonewtons. So this is the maximum uh, uh, load that we can apply to the beam without exceeding the um, the uh, maximum uh, shear stress of 80 megapascals. So I hope this video helped and as always if you have any questions that I might help clarify please feel free to, uh, to uh, let me know in the comment section down below and uh, have a good day. Thank you.